All right, we're going to try and re-establish contact now with Natasha Piri, who's standing by for us at the Jackson Ntembu, Ntembu home uh, in Emelatheni. Uh, Natasha, just tell us what's happening where you are and what the latest is. Yes, yes take him. Okay, a very good afternoon to you and uh, to our viewers. We're just listening to the brother of Michael, the late Jackson Tembu's brother, and he's just briefing us members of the media outside his family home in Emalashen. In Emalashen, that's where the Tembu family is at, uh, together with my brother's wife, the kids. The whole family is here today. And uh, uh, what we would like to say as a family, thank you for the messages of condolences that you guys were sending to us. It really gave us strength in this trying time. And uh, yeah, that's uh, all in short what I can say for now. How is the family doing? Uh, it's really tough. Uh, the whole thing caught us by surprise. Where we as a family, we thought uh, after my brother was admitted at the hospital that you will come back to the family alive and kicking, but unfortunately it didn't happen like that. But it's really tough. I don't want to lie to you. It's really tough with the, my brother's wife, the kids, uh, my uncles, my sister. Yeah, it's really, really, really hectic. Uh, remember, this is one person that was the pillar of uh, this family. He's, he was one person, if you give him a call, you just twinkle your finger he'll be at your doorstep. Now that giant has fallen. That's the unfortunate part, yeah. I know it's a very, sorry, can I just speak about your relationship with Jackson and Tengu and what were some of the last conversations that you had with him? Uh, my relation. Your relationship? <laughs> <laughs> we know you guys are very close. Uh, Jackson is, my mother's firstborn is the firstborn of the family. The age gap between me and him is about 10 years. You can count my how old I am. Uh, he's been a father figure to me. I've been through thin and thick with him. With the ups and downs in my life, I was once hospitalized. He was in 2015. Uh, every weekend he flew from Cape Town to Nelspreet. By the way, I stayed in Nelspreet um, for, for a year. Every weekend he was at my place. So yeah, he's one guy that I say, he, uh, when I was still a kid, this is the person who was buying me clothes, who took me to school who encourages me to study this and that of which I can't avoid now. But yeah, he was like, uh, uh, I've heard people saying there's some look alike or something like that. I'm not sure whether he looks like me or I look like him. But uh, it's like, uh, he was like, uh, we were like twins. Wherever he was, I was always, especially with family matters, he was always there. He was always there, not only for me, for my cousins, for my uncles. He was always there. Sometimes, what what legacy does your brother leave behind? How will you remember him? Uh, I won't go to politics. <laughs> I'm not a politician. Uh, I will only talk about the family. He taught us how to be united as a family how to love one another, how to encourage everyone to succeed in life. He was a family man, but uh, most of his time he spent his time away from the family, but due to work-related uh, issues.
Perhaps last okay, from my side, sorry Heidi. Um if I don't know if if it's too early to ask this question, but in terms of funeral arrangements, can you perhaps give us an indication as to when you're planning to, to send them off well? Uh, unfortunately with that one I can't give you an answer because this is a uh, work between government and the family so the government will issue a statement so all the details will be in that statement yes. I just want to ask one last question I know it's very difficult to speak about this but maybe just take us through some of the conversations that you had with him before he contracted the virus and while he was in hospital um, if you could share some of, some of those conversations with us you said before you contracted the virus. I don't know how do you determine when you contracted the virus. I, I that one I can't. Re <laughs> I can't. Re <laughs> <laughs> but what what I, what I can tell you, uh, we used. My brother used to give me a call every day to find out how how is my family doing, how am I doing, work related. Is there any problems here and there, at home, whatever problems that I might have. But. Uh, uh, I think last week, Tuesday, he called me early in the morning and said to me, Hey, bro, I'm not feeling well. And uh, I've got a stomach pain. No, he, he didn't say stomach, he said abdominal pain. Then uh, I'm waiting for my specialist to come and check me. If nothing works, then I will be taken to hospital. And then I said, okay, fine, I'll hear from you later. Then uh, an hour or two passed, then I called. The person who answered the phone was not Jackson. Well, I, I, uh, you excuse me, I usually don't call him Jackson, I call him Puti. So I don't call him by the name. It's just a show of uh, respect. I said, Puti, okay, go, I'll, I'll call you later. Two hours later, I called the phone, then the wife picked the phone. Then she said, uh, Uputi has been taken to hospital. I'll talk to you later to find out what, what has happened or what's happening. Uh, that was on Tuesday last week. Then on Wednesday, he called me. He said, uh, I'll mix English and uh, Zulu. Then he said, Hibaf, the corona, the abulal. You must sanitize, you must wear your mask. You must, you see, there's no 1.5 meters here. <laughs> so he said, you must keep the social distancing. Uh, later on, I realized that maybe this were his last word to me because after that, I've never spoken to him until I got a message that say it's normal. Thank you very much. We're so sorry for your loss. Condolences Thank you. to your family. Thank you. Thank you for this. Well, Nongu and the viewers, that was um, a very emotional brother of um, Jackson and Tembu just explaining his last conversations that he had uh, with the late minister and I mean he just heard him in his own words uh, Mr. Mtembu had told his brother that COVID-19 is really real make sure that you wash your hands uh, make sure that you keep your, your distance physical distancing and make sure that you wear your mask I mean we saw the emotional brother trying to hold back and fight his tears uh, saying that the family is actually going through the most right now but also thanking South Africans for their messages of support and condolences and saying that uh, this is actually giving the family strength right now. Also describing Mr. Mtembu as a loving brother, uh, saying that you know he played a father figure in his life. Uh, he loved his family. Although he was a very busy person, he always made time for his family. So I mean, uh, you know, in the words of uh, his brother Michael Mtembu, um, I mean, you could see the contribution that actually Jackson Mtembu not only played in uh, the lives of South Africans, but his family as well. I mean, uh, he was described as an in 
incorruptible man, a man who, who gave his life to the struggle and the freedom of this country, played not only a pivotal role within government, but within ANC structures, within his hometown, his community, where we are right now in Imalaseni. Uh, so with those words, I'll cross back to you in studio. And of course, at three o'clock, uh, just a reminder to our viewers there uh, that there will be a drive-by by, by uh, the GCIS and other entities such as the NYDA and Brand SA just to show, uh, you know, uh, their support and the love for a man who was described as uh, larger than life, you know, a man uh, who was affectionately known uh, by his clan name, Umvelase. And of course, we will give you the latest details and updates in regards to this, uh, to this story. Uh, with that said, it's back to you in studio. Thanks very much, Natasha, for that. Natasha Piri there. The ANC-NEC...